I'm Camilia. This is Kini News. Two former UMNO leaders have addressed the implications of Najib's review bid in the SRC international case being rejected. According to them, some in UMNO have voiced dissatisfaction with Zahid and Anwar over the case. Former UMNO leaders Kairi Jamaluddin and Shahril Hamdan have claimed that there is growing dissatisfaction in UMNO towards UMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi and Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. This is following the federal court's decision to reject former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak's bid to review his conviction and sentence in the SRC international case. In a podcast yesterday evening, Shahril claimed that he had seen attacks towards Zahid and Anwar in Amno's forums and groups. He said this is how it starts and said it could be a threat to Amno's leadership and their political union with Pakatan Harapan if it is not addressed. Jadi perkara ini dah mula di, dibincangkan oleh uh, orang Amno sendiri, grassroots Amno sendiri. Um, dan kalau perkara ini tidak diuruskan oleh kepimpinan Amno sendiri ada. Uh, saya saya nampak ini boleh menjadi satu ancaman bukan hanya kepada kedudukan kepimpinan AMNO sendiri tetapi juga uh, dalam hal uh, implikasinya kepada political union yang kita dok cakap tadi antara AMNO dan Pakatan Harapan. Kairi agreed with Shahril saying there were also comments on social media from bloggers and politicians on their dissatisfaction following the court's decision. Kairi added that he thought Zahid's statement that they would leave it to the courts was a reasonable response as Zahid was also the deputy prime minister. But he pointed out that it had sparked a reaction from Najib's supporters and certain quarters in Amno. However, he said Zahid was a consummate politician that knows about the dissatisfaction among Najib's supporters and would be able to manage it. A minister has taken a jab at three opposition leaders for being absent during the Prime Minister's Question Time, which is held every Tuesday in the Dewan Rakyat. Communications and Digital Minister Fahmi Fadzil has slammed opposition leaders Hamza Zainuddin, Muhyiddin Yassin and Abdul Hadi Awang for their absence from Parliament during the Prime Minister's Question Time this morning. In a post on Facebook, he uploaded a photograph of their empty chairs in the Dewan Rakyat and questioned their absence. He said Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim answered questions about the outcome of the official visit to China, the vape issue and the contract doctor issue. Fahmi added that both Deputy Prime Ministers Ahmad Zahid Hamidi and Fadila Yusuf were also present. However, he said unfortunately, once again, opposition leaders Hamza, Muhyiddin and Hadi were not present and did not ask questions. Fahmi added that it was a shame they did not attend the Prime Minister's question time as this was the best opportunity for the opposition to raise questions and to go face to face with the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister's question time was introduced in the Dewan Rakyat at the start of the current session in February. It is held every Tuesday for Anwar to answer questions that are addressed to him. Fahmi's remarks led to Wan Saiful coming out to defend the three PN leaders. Wan Saiful also commented on the question time session and hit out at Anwar's previous responses to questions. Tase Gulugor MP Wan Saiful Wanjan has responded to Digital and Communications Minister Fahmi Fadzil's criticisms against Perikatan National's top leaders for being absent in Parliament during the Prime Minister's question time today. In a post on Facebook today, Wan Saiful defended opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin, Bersatu President Muhyiddin Yassin and past President Abdul Hadi Awang for their absence. He accused Fahmi of creating a wrong perception as the current format of the session meant that the leaders will still have no opportunity to question Anwar even if they were present. He explained that during the prime minister's question time, only the MP called by the speaker can stand to ask a question and the rest will not be allowed to interject. He added that the speaker will also only allow one supplementary question from the original MP and one more additional question from the opposing bench. He said it would be good if the session could be improved with a slot given to the opposition leader to question the prime minister. Wan Saiful added that Anwar had previously failed to give satisfactory answers to questions posed with lengthy but empty responses and said that the focus should be on the quality of answers from the prime minister. 
He also shared a photograph of the sitting and pointed out that the government site was empty when Transport Minister Anthony Loke was speaking earlier today. Earlier today, Fahmi had taken a jab at key opposition leaders for skipping the Prime Minister's question time in Dewan Rakyat. Fahmi had uploaded a photograph of their empty chairs in the Dewan Rakyat, saying it was unfortunate they were not around to face Anwar during the question time. He added that the session was the best opportunity for the opposition to raise questions and to go face-to-face -face with the Prime Minister. Egg importer JNE Advanced Tech Sundirian Berhad has sent a legal letter to Azmin Ali. The company has given him seven days to reply to their demands. Egg importer JNE Advanced Tech Sundirian Berhad has sent a legal letter to former Gombak MP Azmin Ali. This is over Azmin's claim that they had obtained the contract to import the eggs via direct negotiation. In the letter sent through their lawyers, the company demanded Azmin pay 20 million ringgit in damages for supposedly harming its reputation as well as legal costs for the proceedings. It also demanded Azmin retract and publicly apologize for his claims and promise to never repeat them. The company said if they did not receive a satisfactory reply within seven days, they would initiate legal proceedings against him. In its letter of demand today, the lawyer said Azmin's claims in his speech are wholly untrue and maliciously distort facts, giving the impression that the government is corrupted and untrustworthy and its client is unprincipled and deceitful. The company was referring to Azmin's speech in Kuala Lumpur on March 11th, where he claimed that the government had given the contract to import the eggs through direct negotiation and Deepak had obtained the contract. The government had approved egg imports from India until June to address a severe shortage of chicken eggs in the local market. Two days after Azmin made his speech, the sole importer of the eggs, JNE Advanced Tech, denied it obtained the contract through direct negotiation and threatened to sue if Azmin does not make a corrective statement in 72 hours. Meanwhile, Deepak has denied links to JNE. Checks on the company information with the company's Commission of Malaysia also found that Deepak was not listed as a shareholder or director in the firm. In a statement today, Deepak said he has lodged a police report against Azmin over the same speech, claiming that the former lawmaker had criminally defamed him. Mas Armiati and Wong Shu Chi were appointed as the PAC chairperson and deputy chairperson. This is the first time in history that the top two in the PAC are both women. Perikatan Nationals Masjid Tanah MP Mas Armiati Samsudin has been appointed as the new Public Accounts Committee chairperson. Meanwhile, Klang MP Wong Shu Chi has been appointed as the new deputy chairperson of the PAC. A motion for their appointment was proposed in the Dewan Rakyat today and was passed unanimously via a voice vote. Other members of the PAC have not been appointed yet. Aside from the chairperson and its deputy, the bipartisan committee must consist of 6 to 12 members. The PAC is one of five committees set out in the Parliament's standing orders and has the power to summon any persons, documents or records to facilitate their investigations. It is tasked with examining the accounts of the country, public expenditures, and the Auditor General's reports, among others. The committee can also look into any other matters that they think are fit or matters that have been referred to the committee by the Dewan Rakyat. Perikatan National has denied being involved with the recent contract doctor strike. They said the coalition had no links to the strike and just supported the movement. Perikatan National has denied being involved with the Mogok Doctor contract strike. This is according to Dr. Ayman Alias, a member of the coalition's health committee. When asked if PN was involved in the strike, he told Malaysia Kini that they were not involved and were just supporting the movement. The identity of the individuals behind Mogok Doctor Malaysia, who have chosen to remain anonymous, has raised the suspicions of many. This came after Mogok Dr. Malaysia refused to respond to Malaysia Kini's queries about the strike, claiming that the news portal was owned by DAP or Pakatan Harapan linked parties. It added that Malaysia Kini's previous articles on the strike were highly biased and they did not want to entertain the portal's request for comment. 
This is despite explanations from the journalists that the portal had also contacted the organization last week for comment. After Malaysia Kini reported the incident, several netizens had questioned if the group had links to PN. The Mogok doctor contract protest began yesterday and is scheduled to take place until Wednesday. Organizers of the strike called on contract doctors to take medical leave, emergency leave or resign together. The group's demands include that all contract doctors be given permanent positions, an increase in basic salary and on-call rates, and a resolution to staff shortages. The organizers had previously stated that they expected at least 10,000 to 12,000 contract doctors to go on strike. However, checks by Malaysia Kini and other media found that government hospitals appeared to be operating as usual yesterday. Back to Najib's SRC international case, the Malaysian bar responded to comments on the case today. They stressed that one dissenting judgment in the case is no ground for a future review or retrial. The Malaysian bar has expressed concern over what they claimed were misleading comments on former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak's conviction in the SRC international case. In a statement, Malaysian Bar President Karen Chia called on all parties to respect the decision of the courts. She added that one dissenting judgment in the recent review of Najib Abdul Razak's SRC international trial is no ground for a future review or retrial. Chia said misleading statements are being made suggesting the contrary, but members of the public must know that a dissenting judgment within Malaysia's legal system is merely a difference of opinion and the majority judgment will prevail. She explained that there must be finality to litigation and the legal structure must lead towards that finality. If a dissenting judgment leads to a fresh review, then there will be no end to litigation, she added. She said Najib's SRC international case has been decided by a high court, upheld by the Court of Appeal and the Federal Court, and then reviewed by a different set of Federal Court judges upon his appeal, which clearly shows that there are lawful grounds to convict Najib in the SRC case. Chia added that bringing up allegations against the high court judge through an alleged letter by the MACCs is clearly another desperate attempt intended to tarnish the reputation of a judge who has already been vindicated from all levels within the judiciary system. She said this inappropriate and last-ditch effort to cast doubts on Najib's conviction in the case is most undesirable and must cease. Najib had been sentenced to 12 years imprisonment and a 210 million ringgit fine for corruption in the SRC international trial. On March 31st, the federal court delivered its 4-1 to majority decision verdict, rejecting his bid for a review. The possibility of a second review was ignited after the case's deputy public prosecutor V. Sitambaran said it is possible for Najib to try again, while Najib's counsel Muhammad Shafi Abdullah said the dissenting judgment may open an avenue for another appeal. Shafi said the dissenting judgment also strengthens Najib's case for a royal pardon. However, other lawyers interviewed by Malaysia Kini have also indicated that a second review will be difficult, if not impossible. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to miliciakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.